So in the previous video, we got a nice broad overview of what animal homeostasis is about. We'll continue that discussion uh, by entitling it the next flowchart, Animal Homeostasis 2. This is going to be a pretty short flowchart just to give us an understanding of the following. Whenever we're looking at homeostasis, well, we have to understand that this is a process. It's ongoing. Uh, and in order to look at this process, uh, it's good to contextualize our understanding on some basic homeostatic processes, the, the specific processes that are going to be occurring in order to uh, maintain that steady state, in order to achieve that dynamic balance that our bodies are constantly trying to and hopefully achieving uh, throughout our lifetimes. So what do I mean by a homeostatic process? What I mean by this is that, first of all, let's put this into context of where a homeostatic process, specifically, let's say like osmoregulation, uh, where would that be occurring? On the outside of us or on the inside of us? Of course, this is most of the time when we're talking about homeostasis, it's often going to be uh, internal. It's often an internal process that's ongoing, uh, that's allowing for that steady state. A good example of this that we'll get to uh, in uh, a couple of flowcharts will be blood glucose. Blood glucose is constantly maintained on the internal environment because it has to do with blood. And it also has to do with glucose, which gets put into blood based off of our digestive systems. Now, in addition to the fact that this is often internal, we also have to understand that this internal nature of this process often involves exchange, okay? Homeostatic processes will often involve exchange. So we're trying to basically hash out what it means to do a homeostatic process. Number one, it's often internal. Number two, it often involves exchange. Exchange between what or whom? Uh, of course, you know that this is going to be the internal and the external, right? So it's going to be between the internal and the external. But what we have to understand is that it's not a one-way street, actually. This arrow should be pointing both ways. Uh, there's an internal and external uh, relationship that's going to involve exchange of materials and nutrients, gases, whatever it may be. Uh, that's going to be uh, both ways. And another way to think of this uh, is also to just say between the body and, of course, the environment. Environment is external, the internal is our internal bodies, and of course, make sure this is a double-pointed arrow here. What I want to emphasize, of course, is the fact that this is constantly happening. Don't think of homeostasis as this really sort of a simple process where we achieve something and then just stop and hope that everything stays in that steady state. No, this is actually a very dynamic and ongoing process. It takes a lot of work for this process to continue to happen uh, at, throughout our lifetimes. That's what I mean by the dynamic nature. It's an ever-changing nature because we're always trying to maintain this steady state balance. Finally, uh, in order to complete exchange, not only do we have to do this body to environment uh, dynamic exchange mechanism, we also have to utilize some really key characteristic adaptations. Remember what I said in the very beginning of this lecture? We're going to look at three things for the rest of bio. It's going to be anatomy, physiology, and also evolution. That's why we're always connecting it to this idea of adaptations. Adaptations specifically to increase our exchange capabilities. So increase with the up arrow exchange. How can we increase exchange capabilities? What we're going to notice on the internal environment, our internal body, will involve extensive branching, will involve extensive folding of tissues, will involve extensive internal exchange fluid. There has to be some sort of medium that we do all of this exchange on the inside with the outside uh, upon, and that's going to be an exchange fluid of sorts Two of which to be aware of would be blood. That's going to be really important because I like to think of this as a highway. It's a connection to every single point in the body, and it's a great way to do this idea of exchange. It's a continuous uh, tissue all throughout the body, and also uh, interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid is another fluid exchange that's found on the inside, sometimes referred to as ISF, which we'll just write... ISF, interstitial fluid. Uh, this is actually intermeans between. Stitial is referring to the tissues. So remember how we said we're going to be focusing on tissues. We had those four types. Well, in between each of those types of tissues, when we're looking at one tissue or another, there's ISF. This is also a point of exchange. So again, this is a very short flowchart. That's all I have here. Homeostatic processes will often be internal. 
Take, take, for example, blood glucose. Take, for example, body temperature regulation. Take, for example, osmoregulation, all of which are happening on the internal end. Uh, and then remember, it's not just the internal environment, but also the external environment that's going to involve this exchange, all of which is uh, highly adapted for with these mechanisms.